I became a rep for GMB and then a regional organiser position came up. So I went for it and got it and quickly found out it wasn't really a very healthy place to work. There is a toxic culture, there's misogyny, there's bullying. From the inside, it's just absolutely rotten. I came in on my first day and there was an anonymous card on my desk and it said, welcome to the patriarchy. And I remember sending a photo to my husband and just saying, what have I done? I would overhear just open conversations in the office about women that I worked with. I remember one in particular was putting in an application for a senior job and two members of the senior team were on the phone to each other just laughing about her applying for it. And then after she'd done the interview, they were on the phone to each other laughing about her interview. So if you'll speak about this in an open office when I can hear like what the hell is going on behind closed doors, how do you speak about these women? I think I was probably the only woman working in the region at that time with young children. They obviously knew that when they employed me and there were no allowances made for that whatsoever. I remember having a phone call one evening. It was about, I'm sure it was about 7 or 8 p.m. And I was told you need to be at this Amazon depot to recruit at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, quite far away from home. And I said, I can't get my children out of bed at 3 a.m. to drop them to some childcare. That's just not going to happen. And the reply to me was, well, that's not that's not an excuse it's a regional instruction that everybody has to be there and there were a lot of requests like that 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 felt quite unreasonable i attended the online women in leadership program that the gmb runs a male regional secretary came in and spoke to us saying to us well done all of you for attending this women in leadership program and one woman from the women in leadership program has now gone on to be our first female regional secretary um so maybe you know some of you attending this course might go on to get senior positions and actually as he was speaking one or two sisters who were on the zoom meeting broke down in tears and turned their cameras off and left um and it was really emotional and when we came back together they just said you know I've worked for this union for years and years and years and to be told by someone like that that I need to be on a course like this to even consider getting a promotion is just so insulting and it just kind of highlighted really strongly that it's not an even playing field at all for women and men in the union only lasted about nine months there. I contacted HR and I said, I'd like to arrange an exit interview because I'd like to discuss my experience of working within the region and what's happened. And HR came back to me and said, we don't do exit interviews. They don't want to listen and they don't want to hear. And I don't think they want to change. I've been a member now for 26 years with the GMB. I've been an active representative for around 14 years. Four years ago, I was elected to our CEC and I was elected to the Regional Exec Council Committee as well last year. And September 2023, I was elected to the National Care Committee. I did not get paid for this. All I got was facility time through my employer, my local authority. I suffered my first mental health breakdown in 2001. That was due to the bereavement of my father. I became active within the GMB um, because it took my mind and it got me back out of my breakdown. We became a family and we all wanted the same goal in the end and that was to protect our members and stand up for our members and give them voices. And I believe that this was a member-led union. Unfortunately, on the 13th of October 2023, I was signed off sick by my GP for workplace stress, depression, anxiety. He prescribed me antidepressants and beta blockers. I knew in myself, with having suffered two previous mental health breakdowns, that my mental health was out of control and knew it was time to physically and mentally rest my body. The national GMB knew this and the regional GMB knew this. Therefore, I would not be responding to any correspondence 
as I would risk facing disciplinary action with my employer for breaching the trade union facilities agreement. And therefore, to accept my apologies for any meetings until further notice, because I didn't know how long I was going to be off. If I'm not well enough to work for my local authority, where I am a manager, I'm not well enough to work for the GMB. So I wasn't checking my emails, not even for work. My fit note was due to run out on the 28th of February 2024. I had started to be positive and trying to get myself back into a routine and have some stability again in my life. I went to uh, attendance management with my employer at the end of January and we arranged for me to go back to work early February before my fit note ran out. So on the 2nd of February, I thought I've got a lot of emails in my GMB activist account. I'm going back to work. Let me start going through these emails now and see what I've missed out on. That's when I found an email from our national president, Barbara Plant, stating, please find attach a letter from myself and Malcolm. When I opened up the letter, it says suspension from all GMB responsibilities. As I did not respond to an email from GMB head of HR Emma Johnson on the 19th of January 2024, she was asking me if I knew of any breach of confidentiality regarding a sexual harassment case. I could not correspond to this email if even if I had have seen it, I was on sick. I cannot break my corporate trade union's facility agreement and respond to anything to do with GMB. I was so shocked and distressed. I went straight into a panic attack. I could not believe they had suspended me from all my duties for not answering an email. And at the end of the letter, it tells me I must not contact any other GMB members, employees or post holders during your period of suspension with the sole exception of representation. My own GMB family were isolating me from everybody. I was my own. Most of my family and friends are GMB members. Where was my right to reply? I've done nothing wrong. I had to compose myself and inform my manager I would not be able to return to work at the time that was planned to return to work for personal reasons, as I could not tell my manager that even this was going on. What would my members think about me if they found out I'd been suspended? Why has she been suspended? What has she done wrong? I felt sure GMB had broken a rule. I went through the rule book, and under rule five of the membership, from points four to six, it clearly states that only the CEC, Regional Council and Regional Exec Council can ban a member from taking part in GMB activities. I then found out that two further colleagues from our regional CEC was also suspended, one being our regional president, and they have been suspended, to my knowledge, for the same reason this all is very suspect there was an important and vital CEC meeting the following week I put a complaint into the certification officer for a breach of rule the certification officer contacted me back and said I had good grounds for this to go further my colleagues also put in a complaint we have all agreed we want a full investigation the certification officer contacted barbara plant and said you know we've got good grounds for a complaint for breach of rule you know reinstate her straight away i can read out barbara plant's reply i am sorry to hear that has been caused distressed by her suspension 
if she is able to sign the attached declaration, I will lift the suspension immediately. I have a copy of this declaration, which may I state, I have not signed and I will not be signing because it is a gagging order. And we, as the CEC, stopped the use of them gagging orders when the Karen Monaghan report came out and it was one of her recommendations. <laughs> Due to the results of the Karen Monaghan report recommendations, the CEC created a safe space where members, reps, staff could go to to report anything that had happened to them. So back in 2022, I went to that safe space. I experienced some sexual harassment from a senior member of staff within the GMB quite a long time ago when I felt I couldn't speak up because I felt I would have been bullied out of the union and I didn't think anybody would believe me. So I then went to my then female secretary and she gave me that safe space to speak up. The main support I got from her through that was she believed me and that's all I needed. I needed to be believed. She supported me 150%. And little did I know that this very same woman was going through a similar situation. When I saw her speak up, I thought, that's it, I can't keep quiet anymore. This bullying has to stop within the GMB. He's bullying our regional president. He will not leave her alone. He's ruining this union. I think it's really, really disappointing that we haven't seen the TUC make any statement whatsoever. The movement seems to close ranks a little bit, doesn't it? When when people start speaking out. I think I think that the more people that are speaking up, it will give confidence to others. So many members work 60 plus hours a week to make ends meet. Um, like me and my husband work in health. We both work overtime shifts on our days off. And then you see that your member's money is being spent on people like Gary Smith saying we're hiring the most expensive lawyers to try and shut women down who are disclosing valid concerns. People do start to think, what's the point? What's the point when you've got people like that at the top? We need to just make sure that the members' voices really do remain front and centre at all times. And that's not what we're seeing because we've got too many people on inflated salaries on complete power trips at the top. There are some employees who are just such decent people who are working so hard for members. But there's other employees who are just, they're just putting their feet up like they really are. A lot of employees have aspirations to be MPs. So I think they take whatever crap's thrown at them because they think if they sit tight in that job for a few years and they play their cards right, then when um, selections come around for PPCs, they'll get the support of GMB behind them. There was one other time as well, I was told with not even a week's notice that on a Saturday, we all needed to be in a certain place canvassing for labour for the day on a Saturday and I remember it was one of my sons it was around his birthday weekend and I said well I'm, I'm not coming to that it's my son's birthday and I won't be there and again I was told that isn't a reasonable excuse for you not to be there it was quite underhand really that they were using their staff to go out and canvas for Labour candidates that they wanted um, to be elected um, which is just really corrupt and and I don't think that's how w would members want their membership fees to go towards paying for staff to be out canvassing for Labour I said quite openly I, I I know that GMB donate donate to the Labour Party but I'm not a Labour Party member myself I don't want to be out canvassing for Labour I also have one incident where I was speaking at a left fringe event during Labour conference speaking in a personal capacity I was called in and I was told this has been raised at regional secretary's meeting, um, which which felt really intimidating to me to, as quite a junior member of staff. And they said, well, you know, we don't want you um, speaking on the panel with those members of the socialist campaign group. So it's obviously that there's certain Labour MPs that we can speak with, 
but certain ones that we can't be seen speaking with. And I felt after that, I don't think I was particularly popular working working in the region. I was given lots of quite awful jobs to go and recruit. I wasn't doing the NHS work that I'd been promised that I would be doing. I've just seen so many people over the years come in with loads of energy and then just completely vanish and drift off because they just get completely disheartened. It's like we need to reclaim the movement, isn't it?